If you're from the former Eastern Bloc, you're probably familiar with this sight, a Tatra T3 tram rolling through the street, filling it with its iconic noise. In this video, we'll take a look at this iconic tram model and why it is so successful. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it'll be quite cool of you. Thanks and on to the video. Trams from the mid-19th century's horse-drawn models to today's sleek, low-floor vehicles with all sorts of bells and whistles, trams have been carrying people around their cities for centuries. Prague was no different. Horse-drawn trams, and later on, electric trams by such legends as Franciszek Krzyzik and the Ringhofer family rolled around the city, transporting millions of people to their destinations. However, after the Second World War, it was apparent that a newer tram model was needed. After 1945, the communists gained power in Czechoslovakia and began nationalizing key industries. In 1946, the Ringhofer factories, which manufactured the vast majority of Prague's trams, were nationalized. The company was later renamed to ČKD Tatra after being taken over by the Českomoravská Kolben Daněk machine manufacturer, known by its acronym ČKD. Even though the name is similar to the legendary truck manufacturer, this Tatra was a completely different entity from the Kopřednice-based truck manufacturer. After the communists consolidated power in the late 40s, the need for a new, modern tram model was becoming a priority again. So the brilliant minds at Čekáde Tatra went to work and they created this, the Tatra T1. The T1 was a radical shift in design from the previous trams running in the city. The boxy, lower to the ground Ringhofer tram models were replaced by the sleeker, higher floor T1s. The party newspaper Rudé Pravo praised the T1 for being faster and quieter. It also praised the workers for, quote, contributing to building a socialist city and improving transportation in Prague, unquote. The T1 also featured heating, which is useful in Prague's relatively cold winters, whereas the previous model did not. After the T1, there was the T2. The T2 was a longer, wider, slightly higher capacity tram compared to the T1. The T2 was also exported to the Soviet Union in the hundreds. Unfortunately for Prague, the T2 never saw mass adoption in the city. Only two prototypes were rolled out onto Prague's streets. There were multiple reasons behind why this was the case. For example, the T1 was made specifically for Prague, whereas the T2 was made for operation in more cities. Next, the T2 was heavier than the T1, wearing down the city's tram tracks quicker. And last, priority was given to smaller cities like Most or Liberec, which didn't receive as many T1s as Prague, and so, they needed modern trams more than Prague. The city of Liberec made especially good use of the T2, with the last one being put out of service in 2018. In the 60s, technology advanced further, and so, there was a need for a more advanced tram. ČKD Tatra, its designer František Kardaus and its engineer Antonín Honzík really pulled out all the stops with the T3. The latest design elements were used, the weight was reduced, and later on, colorful plastic seats were used. The result of the tireless work of Kardaus, Honzík and ČKD Tatra was this. A 14 meter or 46 feet long, 2.5 meter or 8.2 feet wide, and 3.05 meter or 10 feet tall vehicle. The tram weighed in at 16 tons, which is one and a half tons lighter than the T2. This was thanks to the latest materials of the time, like fiberglass and plastic, being used. This meant that the T3 caused less wear on tracks, some of which were unfortunately poorly maintained. The T3 also featured two headlights, in contrast to the T1 and T2, which only featured one. The first prototype of the T3 was manufactured by the now defunct ČKD Tatra Smíkov factory in 1960. The tram, branded with the serial number 6101, was handed to the Prague Public Transport Company on the 3rd of November of the same year. After a few months of testing, another prototype of the T3 with the serial number 6102 was manufactured and began testing. Testing lasted for almost two years, but finally, on the 22nd of November 1962, the Tatra T3 entered service, emerging out of the Vozovna Motol Depot. The T3 was generally well received, even though there were some issues in the beginning. For example, models manufactured after the second prototype originally had the conductor's cash desk missing, even though at this time, Prague's trams still used conductors. ČKD Tatra anticipated the implementation of self-serve ticket stamping systems, like the one we see in trams today, and built T3s without quarters for the conductor. However, 
conductors were used until the 8th of May 1975, and so, the conductor's quarters had to be retrofitted into the first T3 models. Another problem of the original T3 was poor ventilation, which showed itself in the above averagely hot summer of 1963. These problems were but a small bump in the T3's road to dominance of the rails in a lot of central and eastern European cities. Our air quotes friends from the Soviet Union saw the T3 being successful and definitely didn't pressure Czechada Tatra to make a T3 model for the Soviet rails. After the first Tatra T3 SU model rolled out to the factory, the Soviets definitely didn't coerce the government into sending over 10,000 of them to the country. I mean, Soviets practically stealing Czechoslovak resources, absolutely preposterous. I'm sure our uranium reserves stayed right here in the land of cheap beer. Anyway. The D3 made its way to a lot of Eastern Bloc countries, exported as part of the Comic-Con, the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance. The Comic-Con made the T3 its standard tram model, fit for export all around the block. This was due to multiple reasons. First, the T3 is able to be relatively easily adjusted for different track gauges, which was necessary for export to the Soviet Union. Second, the T3 is remarkably reliable. In 2020, the Prague Public Transport Company decided to modernize 65 T3s for 300 million Czech crowns, or roughly 12 million euros. The reason was given by the CEO of the company contracted to perform the modernization. I will translate the quote to English, but I will put the original Czech language quote in the description. Quote, even though the original lifetime was estimated to be 16 years, operation showed that it can last way longer and with very low maintenance costs. Unquote. Because of this, variants of the T3 were made for East Germany, known as the T3D, for Romania, known as the T3R, for Yugoslavia, known as the T3YU, and for the aforementioned Soviet Union, known as the T3SU. Prague continued to buy more and more original T3 models up to 1976. Then, in 1982, Prague took delivery of some T3 SU models originally intended for export to the Soviet Union. Later on, Czechada Tatra decided to build upon the T3 SU model, and so, in 1983, the T3 SU CS model was born. The T3 SU CS was still quite similar to the original T3 model, so let's jump a bit into the future. It's the 1990s, the communists are not in power anymore, they're just millionaires now. The T3 is not the most modern tram model anymore, having been replaced by the Tatra T6A5. The country is privatizing its industries and money is tight. Instead of buying more modern trams, the Prague Public Transport Company decided to modernize its extensive fleet of T3s and its derivatives. The seats and the electrical equipment were modernized by the French company Alstom, best known for its TGV and Pendolino high-speed train sets. The information panels at the front and on the sides, which were paper-based until then, have been replaced by modern LED displays. And so, the Tatra T3R.P was born. The first T3 to be upgraded to the T3R.P model was number 1016 of the Ostrava Public Transport Company in 1999, although the interior was modernized in 2000. In the same year, public transport companies all over the Czech Republic, Slovakia and Ukraine began modernizing their T3s into T3R.P's en masse. Some had to be put out of service, but still, as of May 2023, this model is the most used tram model in Prague, with 308 vehicles running around the city. Unfortunately, ČKD went bankrupt and the company's tram division went to Siemens. Now, new trams are being produced by the Pozen-based Škoda Transportation. The new millennium came, and newer tram models continued to be introduced. In 2006, the low-floor Škoda 14T entered service. This model was, at least comparatively, a failure. Only 60 have been built, compared to the T3's almost 14,000. The 14T was criticized for being too narrow in some sections, too loud, and for lacking effective AC. A lack of AC could be forgiven in 1962, when long lines for stuff like bananas weren't uncommon, but not in 2006. After the flop of the 14T, Škoda Transportation came out with the 15T, the definitive tram for 21st century Prague. From my experience of riding the tram, I like the 15T. 
It is quiet, provides a smooth ride, and it's slow floor and articulated, unlike the T3. However, the T3 still has its timeless charm, as they continue to roll around the city and many more cities in Central and Eastern Europe and in the Far East. Yes, you've heard that correctly. In 2008, 20 T3s were sold to Pyongyang, North Korea. As far as we know, the humble Czechoslovak T3s still serve Kim well, transporting his citizens around the city reliably and efficiently. The Tatra T3 changed the game when it came to trams in the former Eastern Bloc. Its iconic design, ease of maintenance and reliability ensured that billions of people got around their city in a fast, efficient manner. The T3 still has decades of service ahead of it, so let's salute these incredible machines for carrying us around our cities. Thank you for watching to the end, you're a real legend. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing. This has been Tramly and I'll see you next week. Bye!